Raul Villar, president Hi. of ADP Advanced MD. Hello, Ann. How are you? Hello. So we're at HIMSS 2012. Last time I saw you was MGMA 2011, sure. and I think you have some news. Yeah, so we have some exciting news, Ann. Uh, in late December, uh, ADP Advanced MD purchased Phylogic Healthcare, which is a leading provider of revenue collection management services uh, for small private physician practices. So we're excited to be in a new category, uh, and uh, we're going to market right now. Is acquisition a big part of your strategy for growth? Yeah, I mean, we, we have a, a, a dual approach to growth. I mean, we can, in our growing significantly organically, uh, we continue to add salespeople to our organization, and there's such market demand for our solutions. We're, we're getting uh, over 100% growth year over year just organically. But, you know, being part of a large uh, worldwide organization like ADP, uh, acquisitions are definitely part of our future. Uh, both in the revenue collection management side, like we just uh, completed in December, but also in the practice management, electronic health record, or even uh, small companies that have services that we could bolt onto our solutions, add more value to the small private physician. How big a role will the RCM play in your overall picture? Oh, we think the RCM market uh, is actually bigger than the practice management market. So we view the category as worth $23 billion. Uh, and the largest provider in the category today generates 400 million in revenue. So we think it's a wide open category that's something that we're going to aggressively go after. Well, you were quoted in this healthcare IT news. Oh, yeah. And I just thought we should go sure. over some current events. And then you could tell me what ADP Advanced MD is doing on sure. these issues. Sure. So the first headline 2012 brings new meaning to meaningful use. So. There's been such a small ad uh, achievement of Meaningful Use 1, and they're already imposing Meaningful Use 2. What's your thought on that? Yeah, I, I think the, the objectives of Meaningful Use Phase 1 and Phase 2 are, are great uh, objectives. I think, though, when you take a step back and think about what's going on today in the physician's uh, overall business, I think it's, uh, the results have shown that uh, people are struggling uh, to meet Meaningful Use. Uh, it's not a high priority. Uh, the, the incentives or stimulus uh, isn't a driving force for most physicians. So yes, if they can find solutions that enable them uh, to achieve meaningful use, I think they do, but it's not something that uh, is keeping uh, physicians up at night. What is ADP doing? to push it forward? Yeah, I mean, our solutions are Meaningful Use certified, uh, and we have uh, services that enable physicians that use our solutions to become Meaningful Use certified. Uh, but the physician still has to do things on their end uh, to be certified, and that's kind of where the rubber meets the road. And, and so we've had uh, hundreds of physicians uh, certify and get the stimulus money uh, from the federal government, and we've had others that are uh, available to do that They just haven't haven't done it yet, so uh, you know, the jury's still out. And I think phase two uh, is just more noise in the system, you know, to uh, compound with all the other regulations that are currently in process with, with physicians today. It's a little overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Do you see meaningful use as giving us better medicine or as giving us better data collection? Yeah, I, I think it's better data collection. I think if, if, if you look and talk to physicians, uh, the regulations are, are, are not about necessarily quality care. I think the, the, the uh, impetus was quality care, but it's more data collection, regulation, compliance, and I think the, the benefits of those outcomes are years away. Uh, and so uh, today, there's no benefit in care, uh, potentially tomorrow, but the systems uh, and the network is, is far away from that. So uh, let's go to another issue that sure. I thought was very interesting. Um, the mobile revolution comes to him's 2012. Sure. So I'm a late person, but my question is, do we really want Dr. Jones to be practicing medicine from the golf course? How far is too far with mobile medicine? It's fair. I, I, think, I think mobile medicine, from, from our perspective, is giving physicians the opportunity to do some of their administrative work 
outside of the office, right? So they can disconnect from the facility that they work at, whether it's scheduling, whether it's reviewing patient charts, uh, and uh, doing uh, paperwork, I think providing them those capabilities uh, enables them to step away from the office and be more productive. Uh, I think the, you know, the workflow of using an electronic health record in a mobile application is still kind of work in process. Physicians you know, don't like electronic health records, they don't necessarily embrace technology, uh, and it's not designed to be workflow oriented. So if you take a step back, the electronic health records are designed to meet government regulations, not to make physicians more effective. And so as we design our mobile applications, we're trying to find ways to improve the physician's workflow so they want to embrace the tool uh, and they can still have patient care, face-to-face -face patient care, uh, instead of turning their back to their patient, trying to fill out you know, a tool that they're not necessarily familiar with. Do you think we're going to see the EMR on an iPhone or on a Droid device? No question. I mean, that, that, that definitely is going to be part of the future. Uh, again, it's, it's the, the demographics of the marketplace don't necessarily meet the technology of today. So, the, you know, the, if you look at a, a, a scattergram of ages of physicians, they tend to be on the, on the, on the older side. Uh, we, we've got a, a gap on the younger side. The technology tends to go hand in hand with age. So I still think we have work to do to get, you know, the physicians today comfortable with the technology uh, and able to embrace it and leverage it for productivity gains. When do you think we would see that? I still think we're probably three to five years away from mobility being a de facto standard. Uh, I think we have a lot of work to, to streamline, and it's really about workflow. If, if it was simple and easy, they, they would use it, okay? Uh, okay? So, uh, and it's not, so I think that's why we're seeing a lot of pushback on the tools. Well, the questions are going to get a little harder. Oh. Um, like this my, was a nice headline. Like my teacher from middle school. <laughs> well, I always Ooh. felt current events was valuable because uh -huh. we can discuss. Sure. Could a Republican president slow health IT? So my question to you is, how political an issue is healthcare in the United States? <laughs> healthcare is, is, is one of the most you know, political issues in America. I think if you pick up a newspaper any day, you'll see a healthcare uh, headline like that. And, and I do think uh, administrative changes uh, will definitely change the course of healthcare. And I think that's one of the challenges that we have is, that you know we're on a course the course gets changed uh, and as a provider of solutions in the marketplace it's hard to keep up with the regulatory changes you have to have significant amounts of flexibility in your innovative IT staff in order to continue to comply with the solutions and it requires lots of resources so there's thousands of small providers uh, in this category of healthcare that can't keep up and so I think uh, Republican, Democrat, doesn't really matter. Healthcare is a mess, and uh, and legislation is not necessarily the way to fix you know the problem. Now, the Affordable Care Act is going to be reviewed by the United States Supreme Court in March. Do you? How closely do you, as a vendor, have to monitor those types of developments? Well, I mean, they're critical. I mean, we have to monitor all the all the uh, uh, legislative changes. And the reason why is while we focus on small physicians, all small physicians are impacted by these legislation. So if they want to participate in a health network or an ACO or be in an HIE, you know, we have to be there for them and provide those services and solutions. So I think it's critical and, you know, we, ADP has, uh, you know, a team of lobbyists that, uh, you know, is also keeping an eye on the legislative outlook and I think it's critical and it, and it, and it impacts everyone. Uh, while the legislation may be for larger health systems, they have an impact all the way down the line for the small physicians that we focus on uh, that are impacted every day and they don't have the resources to be aware uh, or educated on the situation. If that law is struck down, which some people think may happen, how will that change any plans that you might have? I don't think it's going to change our plans because we built our plans to be flexible. We, we, I don't believe that the future healthcare uh, environment has been defined yet, whether it's a, an accountable care organization or not. I, I do believe and we believe that our requirements that to serve our, our small practice physicians optimally is to provide them with tools and enable them to move data to any kind of network they want to. 
And, and that's what's critical, whether it's an ACO, an HIE, whether it's just a large health system that wants to purchase them. You know, we have to be able to move their health records and their data wherever they need to. And it has to be simple, flexible, and it can't cost a lot. Does uh, the government drive technology, or is technology driving government policy? Oh, the government's driving technology today, in this category. And, and I think that's the, the problem. I think technology uh, could drive a lot of regulation. Okay, well now, I think the next article is the most important because it's sort of your showcase. <laughs> I was reading this with my coffee, and um, it was a very provocative headline. Sure. And then I saw a very familiar name quoted at length. A train wreck coming, HIPAA 5010. Well, I mean, I, 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 think, I think I was right. Um, and, you know, part of the, of the issue is, uh, is that there are so many interrelated pieces in this health system ecosystem that uh, in order to make a requirement that, that evident, you know, at the end of the day impacts the physician's wallet uh, has become a major issue. Uh, health uh, systems aren't ready, carriers aren't ready, Private payers aren't ready. You know, providers uh, in our category aren't ready. And so, what's caught in the middle is the physician, uh, who's not able to collect, you know, the wages they earned, you know, as reimbursement in the system. And it's, uh, it is really put a lot of burden in the industry. Uh, people aren't ready. Uh, people are upset. Uh, physicians uh, don't have the cash flow. I mean, we, we are seeing physicians calling us looking for lines of credit, right, in order to float their businesses while, you know, the large payers, you know, sort through reimbursements and send back, you know, the monies that they're earned. So uh, it's a major issue. Uh, you've seen, you know, they gave a delay of 90 days. It, doesn't, it didn't really have that much of an impact because systems that switch from 4010 to 5010 aren't processing claims you know, on 4010. So if you're not ready and you can't be flexible to move it in a 4010 format or a 5010 format, you're, evident, you're ultimately not going to get paid. And, and that's a big issue in, in the entire category today. Where is Advanced MD on the 5010? Well, we're 5010 compliant, okay. uh, but again, we have clients that are having the same issue because if we're moving the information to a payer that's not ready or has changed their formats, it creates issues again in, in that piece. And, and so it's created this uh, entire uh, issue in the category where no one, everyone's pointing fingers about where the issue lies. Is it in the software? Uh, is it in the payer? Uh, is it in, in the formats? And, and so that's it's, it's created a lot of pressure in the industry, which is why I think you've seen, you know, people now come back and delay ICD-10. Well, speaking of ICD-10, when I saw this headline, a train wreck coming HIPAA 5010, I was going to say ICD-10, a nuclear disaster coming. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it is definitely uh, and uh, a bigger issue uh, because not only uh, are the payments at risk in 5010. But now you're changing the workflow of the private physicians. So we have 650,000 private physicians out there. They've been doing business for X number of years, coding claims uh, the way they should be. And now we've decided to introduce you know, a standard which is significantly different, uh, which is gonna create tons of issues at documentation stage and reimbursement stage, uh, which is why you know, we've seen you know, the, the signaling of a delay um, of ICD-10, but ultimately for companies like ADP Advanced MD, we have to do the work. We have to be prepared um, in order to move on a dime if the government comes back and says, yeah, it was going to be October, now we want it to be December. Well, 60 days isn't going to do anything for anybody. So uh, unless it's a significant material change, uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure in the, in the industry still. How significant is it that the AMA is act, was actually asking for a moratorium, so to speak? Yeah, well, they're listening to their, their constituents. I mean, people are not happy. They can't keep up with it. And if we thought that meaningful use and these regulations were going to improve care, when physicians are staying up night wondering how they're going to keep their doors open, 
uh, I think that presents a much bigger issue. Uh, we're seeing people opt out of the, of the category. People that don't, don't even want to be a doctor anymore, they'd rather retire than comply with all the changes in the category. So I, I think it's a significant issue. AMA standing up for their constituents, and, uh, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a major problem that we face. Is it realistic, do you think, of the AMA to think that they could have that kind of effect on the policy? I, I, I think they have. Um, and I think they're, you know, definitely have a big voice. Um, and they represent uh, a big group, uh, a, a big constituent of that category. And I, and I think uh, if we move forward on top of what we've seen in 5010, uh, we're only going to put the health care into crisis. I think I have one more. Sure. And I, I think it might be telling, and it is that the uh, British government decided to scrap the national IT program after about £7 billion investment. Any lessons to be learned there yeah, for us? Yeah, I think the lesson learned is the federal government can't dictate, you know, uh, uh, technology uh, to drive, you know, performance and productivity and improvement in the healthcare system. It has to come from private enterprise, companies like Advanced MD, coming up with creative solutions to make, you know, it easier for physicians to comply uh, and uh, and for the healthcare system to be more effective. Every year, there's like a theme for him, so every, you know, whether it's interoperability or meaningful use. What do you think the theme is this year? I think it's regulation. <laughs> and uh, if you talk to, like when I talk to my peers across the industry, I think people are very frustrated with all the regulation going on. Uh, instead of being innovative, so uh, instead of me spending 70% of my uh, engineering budget on innovation, things to make the category more efficient, we're spending 70% on regulation and compliance, which really doesn't make anything better. Um, so uh, I think that is number one. I think interoperability is the overarching, uh, I think everyone agrees it's the right thing. I don't think anyone can agree on what the flavor is. It's kind of like Baskin Robbins right now. There's 31 out there. So, uh, but I like ice cream, so. So do I. Yeah. Well, my final question to you, how, what is it that ADP is bringing to the table for the, you know, the group size that you service? Yeah, so I, I think what we bring to the table is, is we'll be there for, for our constituents. ADP uh, is a you know, large $10 billion organization that's committed to making sure that our tools uh, meet all the requirements that the government provides us, but also enables physicians to be more effective. We are laser focused on the small physician category, and our solutions enable a physician to do it themselves with our cloud-based software, or if they want us to do it for them, with our new acquisition of Phylogic Healthcare, we'll be able to provide those revenue collection management services for them. So if they want to do it themselves, we're there. They want us to do it for them, we're there. Anything to add? That's it, Ann. Awesome. Have a great show. Thank you very much. Raul VR, Advanced MG ADP. Thank you. Thank you.